A bisexual flower, also known as a perfect flower, contains both male and female reproductive organs within the same flower. Here's a breakdown of the typical structure of a bisexual flower. Calyx, the outermost wall of the flower consisting of sepals. Sepals are usually green and protect the flower bud before it opens. Corolla, the second wall of the flower consisting of petals. Petals are often brightly colored and attract pollinators such as insects or birds. And the male reproductive part of the flower located inside the corolla. It consists of one or more stamens, each composed of a filament and an anther. Filament, the slender stalk-like part of the stamen that supports the anther. Anther, the swollen pollen producing structure at the top of the filament. Gynosium, the female reproductive part of the flower located at the center. It consists of one or more carpels, each composed of an ovary style and stigma ovary the swollen base of the carpel that contains ovules style the slender stalk like part of the carpel that connects the ovary to the stigma the receptive surface at the top of the style where pollen grains land during pollination in a bisexual flower both the androsium and gynosium are present within the same flower, allowing for self-pollination or cross-pollination. This structure enables the flower to produce both male gametes, that is pollen grain, and female gametes, that is egg, necessary for sexual reproduction. Examples of plants with bisexual flowers include roses, lilies, and apples. Having both male and female reproductive organs in the same flower increases the efficiency of pollination and ensures reproductive success. Sexual reproduction in plants involves the fusion of male and female gametes to produce offsprings with genetic variation. Here's an overview of the process. Formation of gametes. Male gametes. Pollen grains. Pollen grains are produced in the anthers of the flower's stamens. Each pollen grain contains two sperm cells. Female gametes, that is egg cells. Egg cells are produced within the ovules located in the ovary of the flower's carpel. Pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower. Cross-pollination or to the stigma of the same flower, that is self-pollination. Pollination can occur through various agents such as wind, water, insects, birds or mammals. Germination of pollen grain. Once pollen lands on the stigma, it germinates forming a pollen tube that grows down through the style towards the ovary. Fertilization The pollen tube delivers the sperm cells to the ovule inside the ovary. Underline One sperm cell fuses with the egg cell forming a zygote which develops into the embryo and the other sperm cell fuses with two polar nuclei in the ovule forming a triploid cell which develops into the endosperm a nutrient rich tissue that nourishes the embryo. Seed formation. After fertilization, the ovule develops into a seed containing the embryo and endosperm, surrounded by a protective seed coat. Fruit formation. The ovary of the flower develops into a fruit that surrounds and protects the seeds. The fruit helps in seed dispersal by various agents such as animals, winds or water. Seed germination. Under favorable conditions, the seed germinates and the embryo grows into a new plant, completing the life cycle. Sexual reproduction in plants promotes genetic diversity as it involves the mixing of genetic material from two different parent plants. This genetic variation enhances the adaptability of plants to changing environmental conditions and increases the chances of survival for the species.